Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Once again, happy 2023. I'm glad you're here uh, with us this morning. Praise God. I, was, uh, I really enjoyed the worship this morning. Um, we're very blessed, right? We had, um, I was just looking at Darren um, just playing alone <laughs> this morning, one man band. But many years ago, I was in Indonesia. Um, I, one of my friends was leading worship and he was the one man band. Huh? Just keyboard, but there's drums, everything. So this morning, we also have one like this. While well, the other musicians are making their way back from all over the place, right? So, uh, praise God. It's really anointing. That's a five, five, four ministry there, right? Hallelujah. Praise God. So, um, let, let's, let me just warm up a bit and just, um, hallelujah. It's, it's really, I think it's really blessed that we are in church on the first first day of the year. We don't usually do that. And, uh, and so, um, we're really blessed. So, um, you know, people over, all over the world, um, people like New Year because they like new things, you know. If the, uh, the previous years has not been so good, um, people, they are resolute, right? It's something fresh. So, resolutions, usually first day, first day of the year, you know, I'm resolute. I'm going to do it, okay? Um, you know, it's going to be a good year. I'm going to make it happen, you know? So, let me tell, tell you about this man, right? For 2023, he decided that his, uh, the one thing he wants to do for 2023 is to lose, to lose 10 kg. Sounds a good, good resolution, right? But by the end of January, by the end of January, after Chinese New Year, all right, he found that um, there was 15 kg to go. <laughs> is that true? I think sometimes that's true, right? When you try by your own effort. I, I think um, at the start of the year, um, the important thing for us is to catch the vision of God. Right? Um, I think I shared on uh, our social media from Proverbs, uh, the verse is, without, uh, without a vision, the people perish. But some of the modern translation from the uh, LSV, and, um, and it says, I think NLT also, um, a people is made naked without a vision. A people is made, some versions say, cast off restraint. Um, because we have, if there's no vision, um, then we, don't, we have no direction. Amen? But we are people not like, People in the world, we have somebody with us. Amen. Praise God. And I caught, I caught a word just now during the worship. And it's a verse that I, um, I will share at the end of the service. And I think it's a now word for us also today. And it's this. Um, we will just sing it and it, it, it really touches me. And it's, it's this. God says to us, to you and I, I will finish the work that I start in you. I will finish the work that I start in you. Amen. God will bring to completion the work that he's starting in you. Amen. And I, I believe this year, I've been, I'm excited every year because of the vision of church. I believe, I believe that every church um, needs to have their own vision. I believe there's a corporate vision for the, the church as a whole. There is something God is doing generally. But every church, um, the local church, God has a vision for the church. Right? For example, if you read the book of Revelation, Jesus wrote, in an individual letter to the seven churches, right? So there is a vision for each church. There is a direction for each church, right? And uh, so as a pastor of this church for, um, uh, this is our 10th year, um, I have, I'm more excited about this year vision than any others, any other years. I'm really excited. So I, I, I believe that uh, God's going to do big things in our life as a corporate and in your own lives. Amen. Press God. I shared before that um, I was asking the Lord, you know, because we are during the anniversary, our anniversary, anniversary Sunday, and we had the team of the year for each year. Um, then I was just like, hey, Lord, I, I haven't, got, I haven't, I haven't had have the word from you, you know, for team for 2023. And just sitting there here, and then Pastor Henry was preaching. And while he was preaching, 
the Lord says, hey, that's, that's it. That's the, that's the theme for the year. All right? So uh, <coughs> without further ado, just going to uh, let the multimedia team show you a short video clip, what is the theme of the year, all right? So ladies and gentlemen, the theme of the year Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. If you're not excited, you will be at the end of this service. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. And, I was hearing, and so I was hearing Pastor Henry preach. And he says the number 10, the, um, the number 10 is the number of redemption. The number of redemption. And I was just hearing the Lord. And the Lord told me, he says, use the word restoration. And I, I was like... Uh, Related uh, because redemption covers a lot of area, but the Lord says for your church, for our church, this year will be a year of restoration. Restoration. Amen. So I, I believe uh, this year going to be restoration. So I think over the next three Sundays, because I wouldn't be able to share everything um, in one Sunday, I will try not to go too fast. Uh, but I will lay a foundation this week, and uh, God's going to restore things in your life. Right? Restoration means everything that was lost in your life that you thought is gone, God's going to re restore it. Amen? Praise God. Redemption means somebody paid a price for you to have that restoration. Right? And, it's, and you know it's not with silver or gold, but by the precious blood of the Lamb. Right? So Jesus paid for the restoration to happen. Praise God. Right? So I want to show you the significance of the numbers first. Uh, let me show you something. Some of you know this. All right, so let's look at the gospel, um, what, what, what the number 10 means. Right? So I want to show you um, the gospel story, and just a reminder also, this is good, if you don't know how to share the gospel, this is how to share the gospel with numbers, right? for the number 1 to 10. Okay? Or you can say it's how to share the gospel on 10 fingers. Right? So, um, and I was just looking at it again, but it's, it's really good. Right? So, um, so because of time, I just summarize everything for you, right? So God has a plan, right? God is one, one God, right? He has a plan to save fallen man two, right? Two is the number for division, right? Once upon a time, man was uh, one with God. But after, when man fell, that's the number of uh, division. So God came into time, uh, the number three, right? Uh, three dimension, into time and space, right? Uh, to bring to the four corners of the earth, number four, Right, to show five, what's five? Grace, right? You know, five is the number of grace. To man, man is uh, six is the number of man, right? Six, 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 right? To, um, so the number of man is six. Uh, through the perfect sacrifice, seven, seven is the number of perfection in the Bible, right? So Jesus is a perfect sacrifice and to give him a new beginning. At, right? Last year, our team was new beginning. Amen? And this is very important. And the Holy Spirit, not just to, uh, to make you a new creation in Christ, but to give you the Holy Spirit of God, nine, right? Nine gifts of the Spirit, nine fruits of the Spirit, and making Him complete and whole. That's redemption, that's restoration. Amen? Praise God. Right, so can you see that? Are you able to see that, right? So this is how you share the gospel story. Right, so if somebody asks you to share Christ to them or share the gospel to them, um, and uh, so remember what I shared with you this morning, right? So you can share the gospel. This is the uh, gist of the gospel in, uh, from number 1 to 10. So 10, right? This is our 10-year anniversary. 10-year anniversary. Uh, hallelujah. Praise God. So, um, so we're going to do that this year. We're going to have a lot of celebration this year, right? The leaders come together. We, we're going to celebrate this year uh, for what the Lord has done. And I believe this is going to be a, a good year. Um, just before Christmas, I had a call. And uh, somebody says... Uh, just come to KL. Um, I said, oh, why, why do I need to go, go to KL, right? So it's, I don't really like KL, I like Singapore, right? <laughs> so, but they say, hey, it's our 10th anniversary. When you come to our 10th anniversary? So immediately I booked my air tickets. 
because I think a uh, lot want us to celebrate big. All right, so it's a big company in KL. All right, so uh, so I'm gonna go spend one two days with them. Uh, so I believe G is gonna celebrate a big celebration. Uncle Richard will be heading our celebration this year. All right, uh, <laughs> Hallelujah, praise God. Um, Amen. But let's 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 go to what. Let me do a foundation for you this year. Uh, this this today. Um, praise God. Right. Um, I want to look at Ezekiel first. Uh, Ezekiel thirty six. Right. Praise God. Amen. Um, to show you what God is doing, it's very important to for you to see the work of Jesus on the cross, and Him giving us the Spirit uh, in us, so that. All these things can manifest in our life, right? It's not okay. I want I want change, but there's no power to change, right? Changes come from Him, amen. And when you let Him, right, He's the one who started the good work in us, and God wants to bring it to completion in in us, right? The reason why we have so much problems in our life is because we are in a fallen earth, because of fallen Adam, right? And because Adam fell and Adam became a sinner, we were all sinners, right? And Jesus came to restore everything back to us, right? Everything that God, the, the, and God's restoration, and, and we'll see later on, God's restoration is always better, right? So look at, let's look at Ezekiel. Ezekiel 36, verse 26. Let me read for you first. So God says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart, um, a heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Right? So here immediately we see here, God does not want us to be religious. Religious is stone, all right? Ten commandments, stone. And um, so God gives us a, a spirit of, uh, of flesh, amen, praise God. And because he's, He now lives in us and he, He's leading us and guiding us, amen, praise God. Right, so um, actually uh, Ezekiel 36, verse 26 is, uh, is prophecy as being fulfilled in uh, Hebrews uh, Hebrews 8, Hebrews 10. God says, I will put my laws in your heart and then Hebrews, uh, and in your heart and in your mind, right? Okay, remember that? Amen? So Hebrews 8, Hebrews 10. In one, in one verse it says, I will put my laws in your head and in your heart. The other verse it says, I will put it in your heart and in your head. Right, so it's a fulfillment, it's a prophecy. All right, it's a prophecy of uh, being fulfilled in our time. All right, praise God. Then look at Ezekiel 36, verse 27. God says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my stature and you will keep my judgment and do them. Amen, praise God. And it's being fulfilled, right? Today, you and I, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are forever righteous because God's spirit lives in us. Amen. And God's spirit can live in us because, right, it's, we are cleansed by the blood of Jesus. All right. And today, your body, is God's temple. It's no longer a building, uh, but the Spirit of God is living in us. So God says, I will put... So can you see this is a prophecy? Because Old Testament, it cannot happen, right? It all, the Spirit of God only comes upon prophet, priest, and king for a season, for a time, and then he will live, right? But you and I, the Spirit of God, God says, I will live with you, dwell with you forever, all right? So we have the Spirit of God uh, living in us. Praise God. Right? Look at the following verses. Verse, then verse 29, we jump one verse. Says God says, I will deliver you from all your uncleanness, I will call for the grain and multiply it and bring no famine upon it. Praise God. And that is prophecy again. I will deliver you from all uncleanness. Today you and I, we are no longer unclean. We are no longer sinners because we are now the righteousness of God in Christ. Again, it's being prophecy is being fulfilled in us. Amen. Praise God. But I want to see this, right? That Ezekiel 36 verse 30, God says, I will, and I will multiply the fruit of your trees and the increase of your fields, so that you will never, uh, you need never again bear the reproach of famine among the nations. Can you see that? Can you see that uh, in two of the verses, right, verse 30, 29 and verse 30, God says you will not face famine. I think that's good prophecy for you and I. When uh, we, I believe the world will experience famine in the days ahead. Amen. There is a sermon um, that is, uh, I don't know, if it's still on the internet. Uh, I be, some of you have watched it two Sundays or three Sundays ago. Pastor Prince, Pastor uh, Pastor Joseph Prince, on his online service, preached on the transference of wealth in the last days. How many have listened to that? Right, Amen. If you have listened, you have not listened to that. I encourage all of you to listen to that sermon. Amen. Right, and 
uh, in the sermon, he says there is going to be famine ahead. All right? There is actually it has already started. All right? uh, after the plague, after, there's a recession, and so we are living in time like this. But God says to you and I, you will not experience famine. Amen. Press God. So turn to your neighbor and says, you will not experience famine. Amen. Press God. Hallelujah. And uh, I really like it when Daniel says, God, uh, you'll be like a tree planted by the river, right? God says, I will multiply the fruit of your trees, right? The fruit of your trees. God says, I will uh, multiply it, right? There will be plenty of rambutans and durians, right, for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Look, look at that. Uh, then I want to show you this verse. This is the verse I want to show you. Hallelujah. Praise God. God says in verse 35, so they will say, this land, this land that was desolate, has become like the Garden of Eden, and the wasted, desolate, and ruined cities are now fortified and inhabited. Praise God. Of course, Bible prophecy is for Ezekiel's time, right? But there is a dual uh, fulfillment because he's prophesying for our time. Amen? And God says to you and I, all right, what was desolate, what was wasted, what was ruined, God says now, God is going to make it like the Garden of Eden. Praise God. I, I'm excited because, you know, uh, if, I think if we have been living for a while, most of us must have suffered some loss, some pain, some things that has been taken from us, right? Sometimes, uh, you know, unfairly, sometimes it's our own mistakes, sometimes, all right, it's just because we are in this world, all right? And, and, uh, and things, it might be relationship, it might be health, it might be finances, things that we thought we will never see again. God says, I'm going to restore it back to you this year. Amen? I, I'm not just saying it, I hear the Lord saying it, all right? For GU, so you are in GU, you are part of GU, praise God. And if you're watching online, you're part of uh it is for you also, right? If you're part of GU. If you're for another church, right, God has a vision for your church. I don't know what it is, amen? Praise God. You can still benefit from this, all right, uh, this sermon. But, hey, this, this year of restoration is for Grace Unlimited. Hallelujah, praise God. Amen. I want to show you more, praise God. And um, um, let's go to Joel, right? We know Joel chapter 2 is prophecy on the end times, right? But, um, hallelujah, praise God. But let's, let's look at it first. Let's uh, look at verse 23. Uh, the preceding verses is what I want, to sh I want to emphasize on. That will be the key verse for a year. But look at verse 23. Says, verse 23 first. says, Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for He has given you the former rain faithfully, and He will cause the rain to come down to you, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Praise God. In Israel, they have two two uh, rain, rainy season, right? In Malaysia, we have rain the whole year. Right? And heavy rain in November, December, right? But we have rain the whole year. But in Israel, they have two rain. Right? Praise God. I want to share things. Actually, the, the word formal rain there, the formal rain, um, in the Hebrew, it can also be translated as teacher of righteousness. Teacher of righteousness, right? And then later rain is a picture of grace in our life. Amen. And so it's a prophecy of the time that we are living in that it's a time of the revelation of righteousness and grace. Hallelujah. Are you with me so far? All right, praise God. So this is the time that we are living in. Praise God. Again, right? Joel chapter uh, prophecy is for Joel's time, um, but it's also for our time because prophetically, Joshua 2, in, Acts, in the book of Acts, right, they quote from um, uh, when the church was formed, quote from. Uh, Joel chapter 2. Amen? And later on, we'll see that verse. Right, so it's time. It's very interesting. It's a, uh, you have time, go, go read it. There's an army there, all right, the Lord's army, right, that run through the city, they, they run through the wall. Um, right, so the, there's an army there, but because of time, we wouldn't be able to look at all the verses. But this is the verse. This is the verse. I feel that it's like, uh, that this is the verse that is the key verse for our year. Amen? Praise God. Lord, look at verse 24. The threshing floor shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with new wine and oil. Hallelujah. Those of you know teaching on the grain, the wine, and the oil. Amen? A picture of the Jesus finished work for us. Right? So it's communion, the anointing oil, uh, and, the, uh, and the anointing oil. Amen? Press God. Right? So God says, it's very, very, very significant because God says, 
your threshing floor will be full of it. Will be full of it. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, uh, amen, praise God. So, we will look at this, uh, George 2, verse 25. So, God says to you and I, right, receive this prophecy for, you, for yourself, right? So, God says, I will restore, restore to you the years, the years, all right, the years, amen, right? Maybe some of us, we experience the years, and uh, we'll look at our locusts in a while. May the years that has been stolen from us, maybe our youth have been stolen for you, from you, whatever it is, your health will be stolen from you. God says, God says, I'm going to restore it to you, right? The years that the swarming locusts have eaten, the crowing locusts, the consuming locusts, and the chewing locusts, my great army which I send among you. God says, uh, I'm going to restore everything to you. Uh, and God says, the devastation comes from the locusts, right? The locust. Some of us don't know what's a, what a locust is. I'll show you the picture in a while. And uh, so maybe show them the next, next picture first. All right. Hallelujah. So these are locusts. Locusts, right? And um, there's one big one there for you to see. When, I, when, we, when we were doing baptism, uh, we were doing the baptism. And after the baptism, I saw one big, probably ours is a grasshopper. Right? A big one. Right? Not the small little ones. A big one. As big as, big as that. And um, so this this is a type of the type of grasshopper. But what is devastating, right? Most of us don't we don't experience it here, but in uh, in the Middle East and many parts of Africa, they is a plague, right? It's a plague, it's a plague. And uh, I was just reading some statistics, looking at some, um, you know, a swarm, a swarm of locusts can be forty km by sixty km. That's unimaginable. You can we cannot even picture it. All right. That's, so if they come, right? If you come, you can go to YouTube and watch some of the videos there. They can just wipe out whole fields, not just fields, fields and cities. All right. Can you see that? So you can see. And um, and uh, let's go back to the verse. All right. And in George chapter two verse twenty five, uh, it's not just one year. It's not just one year. And it's many years, all right? And I believe God purposely put there for you to swarming locusts, crowing locusts, they are everywhere, consuming locusts, all right? And so sometimes, sometimes in our life, right, we experience devastation in many areas of our life, right? It can be a lot of bad things happening, uh, right? It can be something, something's wrong in the family, it can be, you know, um, we've been cheated, we've been, uh, our business not doing well, um, you know, there's some health problems here and there, all right? Uh, God says, I want to restore the, all those years, all those years. He says, I'm at a certain age, you know, the medically, um, I, cannot, I cannot have, the, I cannot get, uh, the doctor says, I will, you will live with this disease for the rest of your life, right? God says, I will restore you, amen? We'll show you some of the verses later on, and uh, we want to back everything up with, Bible, all right? Praise God, Amen. And um, and God says everything that you lost, God's gonna restore, right? Some of you, some of you here at this place, I hear the Lord says, God so restore your ministry, your ministry. Hallelujah. You may be serving before and you have not served, right? Because something happened, God's gonna restore it. Hallelujah. Praise God, Amen. So you're not that excited yet. Because you don't know how the restoration is like. But let me tell you this, right? Actually, or oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Never mind. All right. Um, actually, God's restoration, when God restores something, when we restore something, all right, say your, uh, your, your shirt has a tear or your shoe, the sole came off, whatever it is, and we go and restore it, it's never as good as before, right? It's always inferior. Amen. But let me tell you this, right? When God restores, it's better. How much better? Let me let me excite you with the word of God. Amen. Praise God. Right. And uh, I, I've been uh, I've been studying for the last few weeks, just studying some of the things, and um, and so we will see a lot of figures here and there. But actually, I think uh, once you're able to see the verses, where you can understand, right? God's going to restore more back to you than ever before. Okay. So, hallelujah. So, you hear things like this seven, four, seven times, uh, 120%. Uh, 
you hear things like uh, double, all right? And I was just reading, so I, tried, I was trying very hard, right? I was trying very hard to come up with a formula for you, right? So <laughs> if you lost this, and uh, how much that, uh, later I'll show you, amen? But actually, right, we should leave the mats to God, all right? Because mat, uh, amen, I'm getting ahead of myself, but let's, let's, look, let's look, look at some of the verses first, all right, praise God. And then look at verse 28, verse 29, right? George, verse 2, verse 28, verse 29, is quoted in the book of Acts, right? It's in Acts chapter 2. And God says, and God says, and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants, on, and on my men servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Praise God. And there's one more thing, right? As I read this verse, God wants to restore back to some of you is your dreams. Once upon a time, you have a dream. Amen? And everybody asks you to stop dreaming. Amen? And you, you have let go of your dream. Amen? Praise God. God says, I will restore your dream. In interesting, eh? when God pulled out His Spirit upon you and I, right, on the day of Pentecost, God restored dreams in our life. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Is there anything that is your dream? And it's not, have you not, it's not been fulfilled yet? Have not seen? Hallelujah, praise God. It's time, amen. This year is a time that uh, let the dead dream lives, amen. How many say amen to that? Hallelujah, praise God. Hallelujah, praise God. Right, Richard says he wants to play in the next World Cup. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I have some dreams, right? I have not seen um, Press God. Right? Some, some people know I want to go to Japan, right? And stay there for six months. All right, Press God. That's why I need to train some pastors out, all right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Not six months, six weeks, okay. All right? Hallelujah. Uh, Press God. Um, so God is in the, God is in, I, I, I really believe, right? Just now, Daniel said he got the wrong verse, right, from <laughs> Romans 8, verse 21, right? But uh, that the whole creation is waiting for the, um, for, for the restoration of things. So actually, it's, it's quite a good verse for, for my sermon today. I'm a God. But you know that God is in the business of restoration. Let me show you Acts, first, right? Acts 3, verse 19. It says, uh, Repent therefore and be converted, and your sins may be blotted away, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of of the Lord. Do you have the presence of God with you? Yes, right? Amen. Times are refreshing. But there is also the manifest presence. Whenever time we come to church like this, there is the manifested presence. There is a corporate anointing. And it's a good time, right? That's why we come to church and we worship together uh, and we feel refreshed. Amen. But also in your own life, right? In your own life, I always encourage all of you to have a, a personal worship time to the Lord. Amen. You don't have to have the musicians with you. You can worship God on your own. Amen. When everybody is asleep at night, uh, go into the living room, uh, just worship the Lord. Some of the songs, and God will drop songs of worship in your heart. Amen. And you'll be able to sing to Him. Praise God. And you, you don't have to, God will not uh, be offended if you sing out of tune or get the verses wrong. All right? The lyrics wrong. Amen. <laughs> right? Uh, hallelujah. Praise God. Look at verse 20. And then He may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before. Uh, and then this is the verse that I want to show you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Verse 21. When heavens must receive until the times of restoration of all things. Amen. Which God has spoken by the mouth of His holy prophets since the world began. Right? Since the fall of man, since the world fall of man, right? right? Since Adam fell to number two, right? God wants to bring us to number 10. Amen. To the, to the restoration of all things. And He's in the process. Amen. And He has begun a good work in you. So He is going to bring it to completion. Right? Hallelujah. You and I, we are safe, baptized in the Spirit, but maybe we're still suffering in areas of our life. God says, I will restore things for you. Amen to that. So he, He's in the business. God is in the business of restoration. Praise God. It's a powerful verse, right? I, I, didn't, I didn't prepare for it, right? I was just sitting there and Lydia was doing worship and the verses jumped and because uh, 
uh, yesterday when I was preparing, I also had one verse. And, and the last verse that I put, and God says, right, I will, uh, I, will, I will finish the work that I began in you. Praise God. Right? So it's not, how many, how many, how many, do, how many do not like things that are un, unfinished? And, no, the cake is not properly back. It's not back. The house is not done yet. All right? The work is not done. The job is not done. So God wants to finish the work in you. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. And um, so that's going to be restoration. So let's look at... Um, amen? So how much, how much restoration, right? How much restoration? Praise God. Look at uh, Proverbs 6, 30, 30, 31. Uh, this is a principle of restoration. It says, do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. So there's compassion there, all right? But look at verse 31. But if he is found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give, up, give, out, give all the goods of his house if the thief is caught. Hallelujah. Praise God. What is the restoration? Sevenfold. How many, of the, how, many of, how many of you have things stolen from you? Taken from you unfairly? Hallelujah. God says, I want to restore it sevenfold. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. I really believe it, right? Uh, have you heard the story of uh, Pastor Harry share a testimony of how he lost things, how he was cheated? And... Uh, he claimed restoration sevenfold and how it was restored back to him. I mean, I'll, talk, I'll teach you later on how to claim this. But say to, your, say to yourself or turn to your neighbor and say, sevenfold. Sevenfold. Praise God. Hallelujah. If there's a thief, right? What's, what thief is there? So what is a thief in the Bible? Who is a thief in the Bible? We all know him, right? He's a Chinese man, right? His name is S.A. Tan, right? It's a ton, right? I don't know if related to Raymond or not. <laughs> no, no, just joking, right? Joke. Just a joke, right? Uh, hallelujah. So the thief comes to steal. But let me show. Let me show you from. Uh, let me show you from. John John ten first, right? John ten. Uh, but I want to show something else, because the thieves in our life sometimes are not just uh, Satan, right? John 10 verse 8, Jesus says, All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Can you see that? Right? I am the door. If anyone enters in by me, he shall be safe and shall be, go in and out and find pasture. Right? So Jesus says, right, when, in the context of John 10, he says the religious leaders are the thieves and robbers. Right? So uh, let me present to you, right? sometimes, Sometimes the things that, uh, that cause things to be stolen from our lives are religious teachings that we grew up with. Okay? Not to offend anyone. Right? Sometimes we thought sickness is the will of God. God used sickness to teach you a lesson. That's wrong, right? That robs you. And so many years we live with that. Now, I don't have time to show you all the examples, but sometimes, some days we will go back and look at this. But sometimes, wrong teaching, wrong belief, steal from us. Amen? That's why when we come back, when the revelation of grace and righteousness is a time that we are living today, and God restored His truth in us. Amen? Grace means none of us, none of us actually deserve the, the, the blessings, but it's unmerited favor. It's given to us free because of a redeemer. Amen? Jesus' blood. Right? So, actually, every one of you qualified for all the blessings of God. Hallelujah. For the restoration, for the much more. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen? I, I, I can show you a lot of things. Praise God. Then John 10.10, 10, right? John 10.10. 10. Jesus, the thief does not come Except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that uh, they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Not just abundantly, but more abundantly. What Jesus' will is that for you to live more abundantly. Praise God. 
right? So the thief stole from us, but Jesus came to restore things back to us. Hallelujah. Praise, praise God sevenfold, right? Um, you know all the people, all, if you read the Bible, um, it's full of example, right? Of people whose life were restored, right? Um, you know, uh, Ruth, Ruth, like she was a widow and uh, she lost everything. Right? But God has a restoration for her, right? And who was, her resto- who was her restorer? Who was her redeemer? A man called Boaz, right? Boaz. Boaz is a picture of Jesus. Amen? And her restoration was better, right? Because Boaz was a rich man. Amen? Right, praise God. We saw that Joseph lost everything. Why? Because the, the brothers were jealous of him. So they schemed against him. They plotted against him. They actually wanted to kill him. Right? Because he was the father's favorite. Because he had the uh, courts of many colors. And they were jealous of him. And they didn't. Imagine that, right? Your brothers and sisters scheme against you. Amen? Today, uh, actually, if you look, if you know, I think most of you, as long as we are in this, we'll be hearing stories like that, right? Brothers and sisters fighting for the inheritance. Uh, brothers and sisters squabbles over, you know, money and they don't talk anymore, you know? Uh, it's true, right? It's in real, it's real life, right? But, and then, um, what happened to Joseph? He ended up as a slave. Right? And then God uh, gave him favor in Potiphar's wife, in Potiphar's house, and um, everything was okay for him. And then he was betrayed again and ended up in prison. Right? How many of you like that? Sometimes I see that, you know, that is, uh, we go through not just one, but sometimes two big tragedy in our life. Right? And, uh, but then God's restoration is going to be big. Right? Because God's, God dropped the dream in his heart. Amen? And he was a dreamer. Amen? And the restoration was that he became the most powerful man in Egypt to save um, the whole, to save Egypt and uh, the, 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 the nation of Israel from famine. So the restoration was right, more than before, right? He, he's not just restored back to where, where he was before, but now the restoration put him up. Uh, where, where um, as, the, as the most powerful man in Egypt. Praise God, right? So I can give you many examples. If it's the same with David, right? right? David the same, right? right? He did nothing wrong, but here the king was jealous of him. The king wanted to kill him, and he was running for his life, right? But, um, and he was, he was never, like, vengeful. He never plotted against the king. He was still respectful to the king. Right? He could do that right? because he knew God was with him. Amen? And, but God restored him to become the, uh, uh, one of the greatest kings of uh, Israel. Right? So and the Bible is full of this story. And those stories are for you and I. Praise God. And you think, oh, these are men of God, right? But hey, praise God, Jesus died for you. Right? When he died for you and you receive him, the good work has begun. Right? And he's not satisfied today for you to be safe. And be going to heaven, all right? He wants to restore everything in your life back to you. Amen to that, right? Um, I'm very excited. Hallelujah. God wants to bless you, all right? <laughs> Hallelujah, right? People say, cannot get healed, cannot get blessed here, cannot get done here. Amen. God is not man, right? He's not man. Amen. And so is a. Uh, Look at Romans 5.15, right? The free gift should not be like the offense, for if the offense of the one made, um, one made it die, much more, can you see the word much more? Much more the grace of God, the gift in grace, which is of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. Amen? And so what God restored, hallelujah, is always better. Once upon a time, Adam was a manager in the Garden of Eden. God makes him the manager and he was in charge of everything, right? And then he lost everything. He lost the post. Right? He was a fallen man. And so when God restored man, today we are no longer gardener in the Garden of Eden. We are sons of God. So the restoration is always better. Amen? And so what you have lost, amen, ministry, finances, job, maybe people in your life hallelujah 
As a pastor, let me tell you, sometimes, even, this, even last year, sometimes I sit with people and my, I really cry because I see the loss. Amen? And it's devastating. It's devastating. All right? But God can restore back to you. Right? You might lost. Hallelujah. So it's 7 4, right? Praise God. Oh, that doesn't mean, right? If you lost a boyfriend, doesn't mean God will give you back seven boyfriends. Huh? <laughs> you won't be able to handle, okay? You'll be seven times better. Right? Seven times more good looking, maybe. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hey, um, no, it's a broken world. I understand, right? People go through broken relationships. Right, um, there are people who go through things like divorces. It's a, it's a heartbreaking things, all right. But even in those stages, God can restore things back to you. How many say Amen to that? Hallelujah. Amen. I believe this year, um, your business was prosper in the time of famine. Your businesses will prosper in the time of famine. Hallelujah. Because it's not, it's not you, right? It's not you. Not all your smartness or your know-how is the grace of God. Amen to that? Hallelujah. Much more abound to you the gift in grace. Hallelujah. Much more. Hallelujah. God is into the business of the much more. Praise God. Let me show you another verse right here. This is where, uh, this is where I've been asking God, right? Uh, because remember I told you um, that when a thief is found, in, he is to... Restore back sevenfold, right? And then there's another verse in Exodus. It talks about if uh, somebody steal your, if there's somebody steal your cow, right? He has to restore for, restore back five times five cows. If you stole, steal your sheep, there's he has to restore four, four, sheep, more. So you are the gainer, right? So it's good, right? Ask somebody to steal things from you. Amen? <laughs> You're the gain. But I was like, Lord, uh, how, right? how does it work? Seven, four, la, five, four. La. All right, here is a double, dub, double, uh, double restoration, right? For example, uh, Job, right? Job, because Satan attacks him and he lost everything, right? He lost everything. Uh, but then at the, end, end, at the end of the book of Job, you see that there is a double restoration of everything. Praise God. Can you see that? So, um, in uh, Isaiah 61, verse 7, saying, it says, Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. Instead of your confusion, they shall, be, they, um, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in the land, they shall uh, possess double. Everlasting joy shall be. Yes, there is a double restoration. And there's something uh, else called 124, 120 uh, times re restoration, where if things are stolen from you, and uh, you, you add five, uh, what's that? Five percent more, right? So there's a hundred and twenty percent, all right? Um, that is, I think maybe the third sun, third Sundays when I will look at it. So I'm just like, Lord, I'm, I'm also confused, lah. Right? Is it hundred and twenty four? Is it uh, seven four? Is it five four? Is it double? Right? Actually, if you let God do the maths, right? Sometimes it's seven times two times hundred and twenty percent. All right, so I'm just talking to the Lord. I just talk, and actually, I just I also think it's like this, you know, because Job, he's a rich man, right? He's probably a billionaire, right? So it's a double restoration is a lot, amen. But when some of us we have little, right, and everything is taken from us, amen. Maybe God's doing a sevenfold restoration in those areas, because Jesus always do that, right? Uh, the he, he did the feeding of the 5,000 and the feeding of the, of the 3,000, right? Much more, uh, in the, much more in the feeding of the 3,000, more leftovers. So, the maths, I can't, I can't understand. It's heavenly maths, ah, right? And I'm not very good at maths, right? I totally flung my A maths, okay? So, <laughs> uh, we, leave, we leave that to the Lord. How about say amen to that? Right? But let the, let the Lord do it for you. 7 times 2 times 14, right? whatever it is. Amen. But there is a restoration. I just want you to believe there's going to be a restoration. Right? If you can believe 7 4, uh, easy to believe, maybe just claim 7 4. Okay? Just claim 7 4. If things have been stolen, if, like, if you suffer 
uh, if you have a disaster or uh, go through troubles in your life, there's a double restoration. Amen? So, amen to that. But I want you to believe it. But uh, I, want to I want to share one more thing with you before I close. Amen? Praise God. Um, and it's very important. In, uh, in Psalms 107 verse 2, it says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say, So, who he has redeemed from? Trouble, right? And gather in from the lands, from the east, and from the west, and from the north, and from the south. Right? So what does, what does, what does the Bible say? Speak it. Speak it. Let there be, let the redeemed, who are the redeemed? You and I. Amen? Say I'm redeemed. Hallelujah. Praise God. But this year, say redeem. I want to teach you another word. Praise God. Another verse for you is from uh, Isaiah 42, verse 22. It says, um, And this is a people robbed and plundered. All of them are snakes in, ho in holes. And they are hidden in prison, prison houses. They are for prey, and no one delivers. For plunder, and no one, I underline for you to see, and no one say restore. No one say restore. Hallelujah. Praise God. But I want to teach you this. Right? This is the word for you. On January 1st, 2023, this is the word for you. Say, say, restore. Say, restore. Amen? Hallelujah, Lord. Restore my health. Restore my youth. Restore my bank account. Restore my properties. Restore my relationships. Restore, Lord. Restore what? Who's doing it? God is doing it. Amen? Do I qualify for restoration? Yes. Jesus paid for it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen? Of course, this principle is, or is in the Bible. It's for every Christian. Right? Amen? But it's a rima word for Grace Unlimited. Amen? It's a word for you and I. And so we claim it. We declare it. Amen? Hallelujah. Everything. Praise God. All the things that we have lost. Amen? Hallelujah. God says to people who lost in ministry, in ministry, there's going to be a restoration. There's going to be a restoration. Amen? All the years, all the years, that the enemy has stolen from us. God's going to restore. Amen? From the west, east, north, south, they will come. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Those of you in ministry, just clap it. Say, restore. 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 I let the, I let the Lord speak to you. Amen? Praise God. I want to give you another verse um, before I close. Amen. Praise God. And it, I heard the Lord told me this. Um, so I just want to share with you. And then, um, uh, musicians, you don't have to come. Because I, I, I want to share a prophecy with all of you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the Lord says this to me from, Rome, from Matthew 7, verse 7. It says, Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be opened to you. Praise God. I like this from the NLT because some versions say, ask and you shall uh, ask and you shall receive, right? Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will open. Just like this. But I like this verse because it says, keep on asking. Keep on knocking. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Keep on shooting. There's this king, right? And the prophet went to him and says, God's going to defeat your enemies. If you shoot this arrow, As many times as you shoot the arrow, and this, that is as many times the Lord's going to defeat your enemies. And so the king shoot five times. And the prophet got angry because you should have shot more. This is in the Bible, right? Praise God. So I want you to do the same. Don't be satisfied. Hallelujah. Right? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So I, um, it's an exciting day for us at GU. Amen. I believe last year 
where we're just coming back together. It's so fast, man. I was just excited, like, hey, finally we can reopen the church. All right? <laughs> After two years. Uh, and then now we're at 2023. Like, we blink one eye, right? Hallelujah. Blink our eyes. And then it, it's now at 2023. What happened? Right? But it's a year of transition. It's a year of new beginnings. Hallelujah. And so we come to this year. Hallelujah. And God says, it's a year of restoration. It's a year of restoration. Wow, am I praise God? I'm excited, right? I'm just giving the foundation for uh, these few weeks which we want to share. Right? We've got three weeks and then we go break, break for Chinese New Year again. All right? uh, but uh, I'm excited. So I'm excited. I want, I want to share a prophecy with you. And uh, it's, not, it's not my prophecy. Because uh, when I was preparing this, um, I was, uh, I was just on Facebook. And, uh, I was one of the people that I follow is... Uh, I think his name is Brian Siemens. Of, uh, he's the one who wrote the Passion, trans, uh, the Passion Translation of the Bible, which I often use. Right? It's a fair first Bible. And I really like his, uh, because he makes the Bible very clear. So he wrote a prophecy from the Lord. And so in closing, I want to read the prophecy to you. Amen? And let it be to you. Uh, be to you. So I want you to close your eyes and just let me read to you. And let the Lord speak to you this, this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So this is a prophecy. He says, I hear him whisper, restoration. The Lord says, I will restore you. Do not be afraid to follow me into the unknown. For I am the one who leads you on and restore your life. I have placed within you my glorious treasure and I came for you. This coming year, will be a year of restoration in your life. You will end this coming year restored in my love, strengthened in my grace, and surrounded with songs of joy. And your joy will be shared by, my, by angels. They walk beside you, guarding your way, gu uh, for they are with you, my child. They walk beside you, guarding your life, preparing the way. I will restore you, Never limit me. I will restore your family and those you love. They will see me in your life and know that I am the one who gives back to you what has been lost. Don't doubt my grace. That is enough for you and for your family. I say to you, I will restore you and provide for you in ways that will reveal my heart of love. My mercy brings gifts and surprises and surprise supplies all that you need. There will always be provision for your needs. And in my mercy, I will reveal where you can find me, for there will be a season's abundant supply for every need you have. I will restore your mind, your rest, and your heart as you come before me. Crooked things will be made straight within you. For everything I do for you, I do inside your heart, healing your spirit, soothing your souls, Come and, find, come and find my heart and I will restore your heart. Greater passion will rise within you to feast upon my word and drink of my spirit. The hunger I give you will bring you deeper into my grace and my love for you. I will restore you and your dreams, these desires within you for com completions and to touch the lives of others. I will fulfill Promises make are promises kept. As I speak deep within you and in the whisper of the night, I will watch over every word I speak to you and it will be fulfilled. The day begins a new season of dreams fulfilled. You will laugh with joy when promises are fulfilled and your impossibility removed and you will see that my ways are perfect. We end with Psalms 138 verse 8. You keep every promise you ever make to me. Since your love for me is constant and endless, I ask you, Lord, to finish every good thing that you begun in me. Hallelujah. Praise God. We say, we pray the same as the Siamese. Lord, 
that you finish every good thing that you began in me. Hallelujah. Father, we just sense your holy presence in this place. Father, this is a holy year. Hallelujah. This year, you have, hallelujah, you have made it holy, special for us, call for us. Lord Jesus, we thank you you're here this place. This is a special moment, Father God. Father, we stand before you, knowing that it's not what we do, it's not what we say, uh, not what we, we can do, Lord, but it's what is in your word. And it's what is in your promises. And so, Father, we want to uh, run after you, what, after your vision. Hallelujah. Father God, we want to take your dreams that you place in our hearts. And we want to say to you, Father God, as you teach us to, we want to say, restore, 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 Father God. Hallelujah. Lord, you are the one who, be, who started this good work. You will bring it to completion, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, I just pray for everyone here in this place, in Grace Unlimited, and every watch, everyone watching, Lord. Um, hallelujah. Father, we just want to believe for an amazing year, that 2023 is going to be amazing. Father God, that, Lord, we, that you are able to do immeasurable more than we ask or imagine. So we come to you, Lord. Father God, we bring all the areas, all our ailments, all our sicknesses, all our failures, all our mistakes, all the, the, the hurts and suffering we lay before you. Father God, hallelujah. You, you see it. You, your word says you have recorded our every tears in your book. Hallelujah. Father God, we, you see what we have gone through. And Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus, the shed blood, the redeeming blood. Father God, to redeem things in our life, areas in our life. Father, we just believe you for good things, Lord. For amazing 2023. Father, we just excited, Lord. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for setting us apart. Thank you for giving us your vision for this church. We know we are a special church, a blessed church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father God, we, we know that uh, there's going to be a restoration of ministry in all our lives this year. Father God, things that are stolen, things that are dreams that are broken, Father, you bring it back. You're restoring it. Thank you. Things are coming to us. People are coming to us from the east, from the west, from the, from the south, from the north. From the north, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. For amazing things. Praise God. Give you all the praise, give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen, amen. Hallelujah, praise God. Are you excited? Hallelujah. It just kept, kept on coming up. I want you to come for three weeks because uh, you cannot, it's not enough. You need, you need to catch it, right? It's not just, you need not, it need not be up here. It cannot be just up here. You need to catch it, catch the vision. Amen. Hallelujah. So what, what do you need to say this week? Restore. Restore amen. Restore. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Why don't you stand? We're going to close this service. I wouldn't ask the musicians to come. Uh, hallelujah. Praise God. And we're going to do something special. We started, we started something special uh, this Sunday. This is the first Sunday of the month. We have started a coffee corner. It's a humble little coffee co corner. All right. So do stay back for coffee after the service. All right, praise God. We do serve the best coffee in Kuching, all right? <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. But let's, 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 let's close this service. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance and pour forth His peace, His shalom peace upon you. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's going to be a good year. Amen. It's going to be a year, abundant year. Amazing year, a year of restoration for you and I. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hallelujah, praise God.